All right, what's up people? So ChatGPT, this is what this video is about. I'm gonna talk about the implications of ChatGPT for Google search because there are some big things happening. And this is a, an article that just came out um, today about ChatGPT. It's been around for a couple months and it's causing chaos, okay? So one of the really crazy things is that OpenAI and the AI chatbot, which is ChatGPT, it's created by the company OpenAI, has only been around for a couple months and has amassed more than a million users. It beat Instagram to a million users, um, which took about two months to do it. It did it in about five days. So that's pretty crazy. But the interesting thing is that, um, you know, it's it's very polarizing, right? So you've probably seen ChatGPT, um, you know, articles about it, tweets about it, all this kind of stuff. And it it's really made some people um, upset and there's some great potential to do it. So the thing that I want to illustrate here is it's really been like a, a, a Google sees this as a major threat, okay? And Microsoft has done so many missteps um, over the years. They're going to plan to invest $10 billion into it um, and, and that's unnerved Google. But the interesting thing here is there's a code red, um, and that was reported by the New York Times, that Google is really concerned about it. And it makes sense because Microsoft is reportedly planning a feature that will incorporate the tech behind ChatGPT. And this is the really important part. The feature, it aims to provide users with answers to some searches rather than just displaying relevant links. And it could surface by the end of March, okay? So that's, really, really interesting. If you look at what Google does, you know, in, in a typical Google search, they're going to pull out, in a lot of cases, a little step of, uh, you know, some information that you can just kind of read without going to the page. Okay. And so what that means is that's going to continue, right? So let's go to Google and search um, So all right, that's probably not a good a good search. Um, all right, so this is what I'm talking about. People also ask, right? And so what the interesting thing is is with Google, what they're doing here is they're doing a call out here. This is a featured snippet. They're putting some videos because this is typically like a how to, and so they want to put you know, YouTube front and center because a lot of people use YouTube for how to. Um, and I hope you're finding this interesting because it is really interesting. And then there's also the people also ask. And if you see this, um, you see this with, with a lot of different uh, things. Typically, um, there'll be text. And if you like go into one, it's going to give more um, suggestions about that. But this, uh, typically, if, if I did a search uh, like this, you know, oftentimes you'll see this just pulled right into the search engines, right? And this is what I want to illustrate. So people can just have a question, click on it, get the answer, not even go to the sales page, okay? So when you think about in the in that in the context of ChatGPT, you can see why Google is, is upset about it. And I opened the link here um, and I've reached my limit for free articles. So one of the things that you can do is you can save it to Pocket and then you can read it, uh, the full article in Pocket because it's it's pulling it behind the uh, the paywall. So you can read about, um, you know, the, the code red and what is so important about this and what it, it, Google's really got, um, you know, got them going about this. But there are some really, you know, fascinating things going on with, AI in terms of visuals, in terms of text. So there's ChatGPT, um, there's uh, DALI 2, and this is more like a digital image. So, you know, um, so you can basically create art in the style of someone else, right? And you can tell it, you know, give me different, different uh, unicorns that are in the style of, you know, um, Salvador Dali, let's say, or something, um, or Jackson Pollock. And then there's GPT-3. Um, this can actually write, argue, and code. Um, so it's it's really profound what's going on with this, okay? Now, Microsoft, as I mentioned, you know, they're working on a GPT-powered chat to challenge Google. And I think this 
really will make a lot of sense because if you've used ChatGPT, it, it gives you the information really concisely, okay? And it's going to get more effective because right now, um, a lot of what ChatGPT puts out is kind of a little bit flat in terms of voice, in terms of tone, right? So if you're just pulling that and trying to create an article or some content based on ChatGPT, you can do it, but it's a little bit factual, it's a little bit flat. And so it would really help if you just, you know, alter that by putting in some, uh, some pizzazz, you know, a little bit of, of humor maybe, that sort of thing, okay? Um, so I disagree with this um, because former Google employees said that ChatGPT was unlikely to be a replacement for Google search. Okay, the, the reason this is so big is because Google is going to, they make so much money from this and they're gonna start losing revenue from that. And also people are using TikTok, you know, um, younger people are using TikTok as a search function. Um, so that's pretty interesting as well. All right, so uh, ChatGPT, um, two philosophers have told uh, Insider they've already caught students trying to pass off AI generated content. It does make it harder to uh, to catch, and you would think that th that they would be improving this to try to bring more um, uh, uniqueness and color to the writing. Um, so job letters, uh, universally hated by job seekers. So this guy used GPT to write cover letters, and they actually were largely impressed with them. Although they did say here that the letters lack personality and suggested that job seekers use it more as, as a jumping off point. So again, you know, trying to bring that personality into it. Um, Nick Cave is really unimpressed with GPT. Um, he, he said a, a grotesque mockery of what it is to be human and dismissed it as bullshit. But I want you to understand what this is, is this almost looks like it was written by ChatGPT because it's, it's actually repeating this in the, in the very next sentence. And I don't know if this is, you know, um, you know, written by chat GPT or, you know, just a, a case of, of improper proofreading, but it is interesting. And uh, Amar Reshi actually <laughs> created um, a children's book with uh, Mid Journey and chat GPT. Um, and again, you know, some people said it was, uh, you know, it didn't really have, have a voice. The writing is stiff, but you can kind of see the potential of, you know, what, what can happen with it? So part of the, the the real thing of understanding how to use ChatGPT is understanding how to use the prompts, right? It's a new technology. What's the best way to use it? I'll put a link here in the description and I'll let you get uh, to, it'll link over to some of the best prompts that you can use to get the most value out of GPT. So if you're interested in chat GPT, definitely check that out and let me know what side of the fence you are on chat GPT. If you like it, if you don't like it, and also in particular, what you think is happening to the world of search because Google has really had the monopoly on that for far too long. I can see you know, how they can start to lose um, some market share. And I think Microsoft actually is is betting big on ChatGPT, and I think it's a smart bet. Anyhow, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And also, I got another couple videos on ChatGPT, how to summarize YouTube videos, and how three ways you can make money from it. I'll link those in the cards here, and you can see them on the screen, on the end screen. All right. That's all I got guys. So check out one of those other videos and make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more about chat GPT and AI and how to use that to your advantage this year in, um, you know, and in coming years.